video, we will show how to install FDT cabinet using Comscope Cap 6. Comscope cabinet offers dustproof environmental and mechanical protection for the fiber management functions of splicing, patching, and passive component integration. The cabinet features four spic tear routing system providing easy, flexible, and smart fiber cable management. Connectivity between any two points within the cabinet is achieved with a single cable length. The forced cable routing system provides simplified cable routing and structured slack storage which assures easy accessibility to the cables in the future. Let's start with the kit content. Here's a list of what is included inside the cabinet. We have 7 MFPS panels 144LC APC. Six of these panels used for distribution cables termination and one panel is used for feeder cable. We also have 24 splitters with a 2 to 32 split ratio. And on the left hand side, we have parking plates for splitters and used ports. We also include in the cabinet cables ceiling clamps and cable fixation. Within the backing, we have also a, a cardboard box that includes accessories needed for cable termination. Inside this box, we have flexible tube to route the cable from the fixation to the panels. And we also have cable strength member fixation, hose clamps, tie wraps, allen key, and we also have fan out kits for each of the MFPS panels. Comscope Cap 6 is designed to be mounted to STC Concrete Base Type 3. The drawing here shows dimensions of the base. It's important to follow these dimensions precisely to make sure that the cabinet will properly fit. 12 mm anchor bolt must be pre-installed with the base with a 75 millimeter of the thread clear above the concrete surface. The cabinet is equipped with locking system. To unlock, use STC Allen key, which includes a security pin. Rotate the key counterclockwise to unlock. Then lift the door handle and rotate it counterclockwise. This will open the right hand door. To open the left hand side door, unlock the latches at the top at the bottom of the door. The next step is to unmount the cabinet from the wooden base. The cabinet is delivered in a wooden frame and fixed by four lag bolts. With a box trench, undo the four bolts. Do not try to hammer the wood frame as this could harm the cabinet body, but instead totally remove the four bolts and then that will release the cabinet from the wooden frame. Now to mount the cabinet to the concrete base, lift the cabinet using lifting ears that are already installed in the cabinet. Place the cabinet above the concrete base and then connect the earthing wire before totally mount the cabinet. The earthing point is at the bottom of the cabinet outside and it can be connected directly to the concrete base. Then place the cabinet on the concrete base and make sure all the anchor bolts are aligned with the holes in the body of the cabinet. Then use supplied washers and bolts to secure the cabinets from the sixth location and use a wrench key to tighten them. 
To pull the cables inside the cabinet, first open the hand access plates. Undo the eight wing nuts to open the plate. Opening the hand access plate will allow guiding cables to the desired cable gland. The drawing here shows the assignment of each cable, starting from feeder cable on the right top, then first distribution cable, and the rest up to six distribution cables. Take the PG glands uh, plugs out uh, for the desired cable entry, then pass the cable through the PG gland. We need to bring in 3.5 meter of the cable inside the cabinet. Next step is to prepare the cables inside the cabinet. Prepare the cable and remove the jacket as per local standard. On the right hand side we see a drawing showing dotted lines where the um, cable jacket should end. So the cable preparation should be at this point. Leave 80 millimeter of the strength member so that we can use it to, for fi uh, strength member fixation. Clean the loose tubes and remove all gel, and then insert the strength member in the CTU, as we will see in the next slide. Using the kit supplied with the cabinet, fix the strength member in the universal strength member connector, and then connect it to the fixation panel. If the cable diameter is more than 8 mm, secure the cable with hose clamps um, into the fixation panel. If the cable diameter is less than 80 mm, secure the cables with tie wraps. Then, tighten the cable glands to sealed cable entries, as in the picture on the left hand side. Using the corrugated flexi tube supplied with the cabinet, cut a piece that with the length from the fixation plate to the assigned MFPS panel. After that, pass the loose tubes in the flex corrugated tube and fix the tube with tie wraps. ODF panel termination. First, open the panel cover by pushing up the latch at the corner of the cover, as we see in the left-hand side picture. Then, to open the drawer, push the lock pin on the right-hand side. In this picture, we see the MFPS panel inner components. In the next slides, we will see how to terminate the corrugated tube to the fan-out kit and how to guide fibers to the splicing tray. Install loose tubes into the fan out bracket. First 60 tubes on the upper side and tubes from 7 to 12 on the lower side of the bracket. Strip the loose tubes at 5 cm after the fan out bracket. Then install transportation tube over the loose tube and slide it into the fan out bracket. Trace the loose tubes inside the panel, then push the flex tube in the fan out bracket. Install the fan out bracket into the shelf by sliding it until you hear it clicks into its place. Install flex tube holders and transparent cover for the fan out bracket. After that, to guide transportation tubes from the fan out bracket to the splicing tray, open the drawer in our bend control and cable clip in the drawer as shown in the pictures above. Then fix the tubes into the tube holder and install the tube holder in the splicing tray. Repeat the same procedure for all tubes. 
splice fibers from the outside plant cable to the fibers of the pigtails and then store fibers inside the splicing tray. Splitter cable routing. As we can see in the picture, splitters are arranged in their top right side of the cabinet. Splitters pigtails are parked in the parking area on the left hand side. In the middle, we have cable management area to store cables slack when terminating splitter ports. The forced cable routing allow one path to connect splitter ports and store cable slack. Here is a map of parking area. This map shows where each of splitter's ports is located. Parking panel number 1 contains splitter's ports for splitters from 1 to 12, and parking panel number 2 contains splitter ports for splitters from 13 to 24. This map is printed and included in the cabinet and can be found in the document holder. To connect the splitter output to patch panel ports, first disconnect the selected connector from parking area. Then clear the cable from the bundle up to the splitter module. After that, route the cable in the proper path as shown. Hang the cable slack loop to the highest possible bend control cable drum as shown. Repeat the same procedure for all cables following the connectivity assignment. To close the cabinet, first close the left hand side door and then the right hand side door. Make sure that the door handle is pointing horizontal before closing the right hand side door. After that, rotate the door handle clockwise and lock the door with the hexagonal key. This completes the installation of FDT cabinet using Comscope Cap 6.